This goes along with my, a lot of my other videos, you know, Christ in you, Christ in us, you know, getting back beyond the fact of male and female, getting into a whole new creation in Christ Jesus. So consider this, birthing, things to ponder. This subject matter without that will appear as heresy to the average Christian mind. So, what I will ask you to do is to at least give it some thought before throwing it out. You find out it's not heresy. Here are some of my thoughts that touch on this matter of birthing. You hear this a new age movement. I'm not talking about what they're saying. What they're saying is 180 degrees from what we're talking about from a biblical standpoint. I want to give out a subject matter that was introduced to me some time ago, and since then has been confirmed to, be, to me to be true. Back then, before this confirmation, I thought it to be heresy conflicting with my Christian views or beliefs. This subject matter of birthing has a lot to do with the original sin, the creation of Eve and the fall of Adam. Later, we see Paul dealing with this in the book of First and Second Corinthians, where he had to deal with male and female conflict of that church. There are carnal views a male and female is seen where Paul wrote that he had to, he desired to speak unto them at, 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 no, as unto spiritual truth. Yet he had to give them only the milk of the word. He had spiritual truth to offer, which he had shared with some with others, more advanced Christians that he had established, yet they were not ready for it. I'm asking, are you ready for this? Well, we'll see. We'll find out by the comment area here. If you trace the writings of Paul, Seeing them in the order of their writing, you see how these thoughts develop over a period of time. Paul changed. To give you a brief idea of what I mean, First and Second Thessalonians was written around A.D. 54. Then Galatians was written around A.D. 58. Then after the first, then after that came First and Second Corinthians around 50, A.D. 59 through 60. So prior to his comments to the Corinthians. He had knew these things which I will share with you that come out of the book of Galatians chapter 6 verses 15 to 60. For in Christ neither circumcision or uncircumcision avails anything but a new creation. For it may walk according to this rule or view, perspective life, peace be unto them and mercy upon the Israel of God. In other words, he was saying if you want any peace in your life, in our case uh, this matter of male female relationships you had better come to understand this view and perspective of life or you end up in some carnal view of it the bickering fight between male and female we see it going on today now Paul takes this further earlier in the same book of Galatians 3.28 there is neither Greek or Jew or Greek there is no or is there bond or free there is neither male or female for you are all one in Christ Jesus. Paul at that time knew this truth, had wanted to share this to those in Corinth, yet because of their dull hearing and lack of spiritual insights could not. It would have solved their conflict and would solve many conflict today if only we had the spiritual ears to hear it. It's my birthing. Give me as male and female. Many church doctrines were built upon what is shared here to a carnal church without seeing it wasn't a deeper spiritual side of this issue of male and female. You don't want to take your dictates to the church of Corinth. You see it in the past where there are some churches that went so far as to have males sit on one side of the pews and the females on the others. There's a group called the Shakers who were one such group and no longer exists. <laughs> uh, it gets crazy how they twist the word of God. Yet with the church of Galatia, this was understood that there was neither male nor female. So what does this mean? Well, I'll be getting into this as this article develops. I have other articles that go along with this. I may put them out later on or may add to this one. We'll see how, how it goes here. Let me give you one more text from the book of Colossians before we go on. This was written by Paul around 64 A.D. So this is after his letters to the church at Corinth. You see God expressing it through Paul once again, thus revealing its importance. Colossians 3.11 Wherefore, there is neither Greek nor Jew, circumcision and uncircumcision, barbarian, sentient, bond free, for Christ is all and in all. 
you see the greater depth of this perception in the closing remark. Christ is all and in all. Now I've got a video on that. And people don't accept that. That's a mystery hid. Christ in you, hope and glory. The mystery hid since the time began. Well, that comes out in this other video. This is the ultimate task of birthing, which in truth is an awakening to the reality of what Jesus accomplished for all. That comes out in the other videos. You see Paul's attempt to get these Corinthians and in, in this his last that is to see them, to see this truth we were bringing out in this article. A truth beyond seeing, a truth beyond seeing all becoming beyond a fleshy corner of natural view. Wherefore, hence when we know no man after the flesh. Now the word wherefore, when you see this word in scripture, always ask yourself, what's it there for? <laughs> Paul earlier reveals the secret of gaining the spiritual insight I desire to share with you all in this article. He's sharing it to a carnal people. Here's the secret. First, or Second Corinthians 5.14 For the love of Christ constrains us, because we thus judge, come to this conclusion, that if one died for all, that all were dead, and that he died for all, that they which lived should not henceforth live unto themselves, in their world view and perspective, but unto him who died for them and rose again. So the answer to the question, where, what, is, what is it there for? It's because of what Christ accomplished, Jesus accomplished for us all. Thus we should no longer live unto our particular race, culture, or creed, gender, or creed. This matter of birth extends to all. Thus we are be all being born again. Though we are only dealing with one issue in this article, male female, it touches every area of our life. If there is ever to be peace in this world, this one view, rule, or perspective must be understood and have all come to see what Paul, in the context of this same chapter of 2 Corinthians 5, brings out. They missed it. Let's see if you can catch the drift of what Paul and I have now come to, to convey. 2 Corinthians 5, verse 17. Therefore, what's it therefore? If any man be in Christ, he is a new creature, a new creation. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. All things. Not just a few things, all things. And all things are of God, who have reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ and has given us the means of reconciliation or birthing. This new creature is just that. It is not male or female, nor is it fashioned after anything we have experienced in this life and its cultures, creed, gender differences, or anything that can be named. It is, as I've been told, that it is a new being with new sense of reality with new power all which at this text clearly says is from God let me now take you deeper into what Paul later learns and I have come to experience and is what I am tempted to convey with you, with you the reader now the book of Romans is written after Paul's letter to the Corinthians he had seen something and shares it with the Corinthians yet later in the book of Romans takes it further Here's what he saw, 2 Corinthians 4, 16. For which cause we faint not, but though our outward man perish, outward being, yet the inward man being is renewed day by day. It was new to us, different from what we've ever seen or heard. Eyes not seen, nor ear heard. This idea of the outward man perishing addresses more than just the body, but also deals with the views and perspective that we have locked up in this experience such as that of the Corinthians, and they're being wrapped up with this male-female issue. How do I know this? You see Paul express it in the same chapter. Check Corinthians 4, chapter, verses 17 to 18. For our light afflictions, which is but for a moment, works for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory, which, while we look not the things which are seen, but the things which are not seen, for these things are our only temple, but the things which are not seen are eternal. The petty issues are a distraction of something far greater. At best, they are only temporary. To allow these temporary issues to keep us from the eternal weight of glory that Paul mentions and desires to get us in, get them into is a matter of great loss. He later, when he learned something deeper on this 
he writes to the Romans, For I reckon that the sufferings of this present life are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. Romans 8, chapter 8, verse 18. This life can't be compared to this glory, this new reality, this new being, and this new power. Now, in my ad series, the distortion of the new creation is touching upon it. This is just a, like a, a video I want to use to fill in to something I've said. And it gets into this matter of birthing. Paul called it, he said, though you have many instructors in Christ, but you only have one who has birthed you brought you into realization of this new creation, this new being, this new reality. It gets you past your races, your cultures, and your religious creeds and gender. And see, then, God's given up on this place. So much so, he's created a whole new creation. You want to embrace the new creation. You want to become known as you were known after the mind of God in that image and idea not according to the race, cultures, creeds, and gender, not according to the flesh, and not according to the world, the flesh, and the devil, and their opinions, and ideas. You're surrounded by it. You have to become crucified to all this, to gain this. And to do that, you have to let go what you were raised in. Not that, you know, it's fearful. It said the flesh trembles at this fact. You feel like you're losing your sense of identity. Yeah, but what? You no, know, what creation do you want? That creation, which is uh, under foreclosure, well, you want to take off a new creation. This, as I said, these are just some additions. This matter of birthing, it probably comes out in the other videos in greater depth. But this gives you some more idea of what I'm talking about about the distortion of this uh, new creation. You see what's happening in the world today. The bickering fight between male and female races. All the cultures fighting each other. There's something greater. God has offered it. The world's trying to offer something through their genetics, you know. I remember transhumanism, trying to get past male and female, getting away with, getting rid of, with, rid of the races, taking down all the borders. Human efforts to try to solve the problem. They're never going to solve it. It's already been solved. <laughs> How you gonna, why wouldn't you want to take what God saw? Get the, well, you want to get to know Him, the power of His resurrection. It's all in that fact. What He accomplished takes care of all the squabbles and bickering fighting in this world if we would only get in Christ. And that Christ is in you. That comes in that search. Christ is in us. So, I mean, I'm rhyming here real fast. I mean, just tuck this in the back of your mind. Don't see it as heresy. Now I'm saying the religious mind is heresy. Paul had things to say that hard to be understood. And they took what he had said and twisted it as they did with the rest of the scripture to their own destruction. Consider these things. Ponder these things, brother. God's all for your new creation. You want to hang on and watch God? Now I'm, saying, I'm at the point in life I won't argue no more. You come in there and you want to start adding your stupid comments who are off the wall so independent from God. And you haven't asked Christ in you, have it confirmed to you. Be like the Bereans. Go off and search these things, see if they be true. Search the scriptures. I mean, it's there. Not the letter of it, but the resurrected power, the Holy Spirit will give that dead letter. If you see how Paul learned these things to a process. I mean, I just showed you how he does, you know. Just trace the datings of the book. The letter, he progressively unfolded to him. He had said, you know, talking about the inward man being renewed. And at some point, he begins to realize that you can put him on. And you say, what do you mean, put him on? Though the outward man is decaying, yet the inward man is being renewed day by day, being made for a new existence. He said that inward man will sustain you if you could learn to put him on and counter this death and decay of this body, this virus body. The Zoe life is in you, to Christ in you, to your quickened human spirit. It's locked up in you. You learn to work it out. I mean, I share these things over and over and over again. And at some point, some people, they catch it. You have to hear it and repeat it. Or they go off of what they got. I say, I'm going to offer you new, new wine. But if you're satisfied with the old wine, then you will keep what you got. I can't, this new wine won't fit into your particular race, causes, and creeds, and gender. All together, something different. New. New to us. God bless you.